All right, more people standing up, pushing back against lockdowns. President Trump gave a very important address yesterday. We've got tons of other things to get to. The Michigan hearings, lots more. It all starts right now. All right, welcome to the show, folks. I'm Drew Berkowitz. This is my show. Glad to have you. Lots to cover today, like I said. Some additional Veritas videos yesterday dropped. Not going to cover them. If you want to go check them out, you can. Um, you know, but again, there's a lot of stuff dropping from James O'Keefe in what they're doing there. Uh, you can find them on there. I think they've got ExposedCNN.com, obviously ProjectVeritas.com. Lots of, lots of ways to go watch those. Um, but I think, it's again, it's more of what you'd expect, kind of like we said yesterday about the initial batch of videos that dropped interesting upsetting frustrating all those things but also not surprising so you can keep there you know if, if we get something that's just a huge bombshell from them obviously we'll share it here uh with you guys and discuss it but let's start with this because it's awesome i think it's awesome it's not awesome all the draconian rules restrictions laws that are being pushed down upon people particularly in democrat-run states across the country but it's awesome to see people waking up it's awesome to see people doing the right thing and standing up for their rights, standing up for this country. We saw the crazy scene with the, the gym owners in Buffalo where the health department officials, the sheriff showed up. They, they basically told them to get the hell out, chanted them out of there. And then we saw the bar owner in Staten Island pushing back. He got slammed for it by the left. He got slammed by local officials there. It was shut down by the police last night. As part of the whole COVID lockdown thing, um, and, and because he was pushing back. Well, Americans are rallying for him. And we're seeing Americans rally across the country, whether it's for President Trump, whether it's for exposing what's going on with this election, whether it's for these lockdowns and restrictions, what have you. Again, people are waking up. People are waking up, they're doing the right thing, and they're standing by their local businesses, they're standing by their, their, their you know, individuals and communities across the country. And Americans are rallying for this bar owner. Here was the scene. It's a muted clip, but you can see it here. And you can see the streets just flooded with people who are saying, we support this guy. We think that what you are doing in this state is absolutely ludicrous. You've gone too far. They've got their American flags going. It's just an awesome scene. It's an awesome scene. And it, give, it should give you hope as we enter this Christmas season during the worst year we've ever had. I'm sure there's some people who are having fun this year. I don't know who they are. And I'd love to know what their secret is, but it's been a crappy year. We can all admit that. But it's really, really encouraging to see Americans wake up, stand up, and push back against such just ridiculous, ridiculous tyranny coming from these governors. Speaking of lockdowns and pushing back, meet David, I think it's Morris, We'll say it's Morris, and I'll, I'll confirm that in a second. It is David Morris. All right, meet David Morris. Look at this clip. Roll one. The details on why the judge said no. Tavarius, uh -huh. is everything okay? Okay. My government leaders have abandoned me. Are you are you the owner? Of Four trillion dollars of stimulus money. They gave it to who? Special interest groups and campaign donors. I'm Dave Morris. I own the place. So what's going on? What's going on? You know what's going on. Tell me. You tell me. Hey, we got a government that has taken the stimulus money. They gave it to special campaign donors. They gave it to special interests. They abandoned me, and they had put me in a position where I have to fight back. Okay? So do you feel that this is the right thing to do? Absolutely. I feel everybody needs to stand up. Hey, listen. There was enough money to give every family every family in this country twenty thousand dollars to go home for two months they chose to give it to special interests and campaign donors the kennedy space center and they abandoned us so you could have given me money i'd gladly walk away for 60 days and let this virus settle down i'm not going to do it alone okay are you going to continue to violate the state's orders and this stay open sta state order this isn't an order this is a conspiracy this is a tyranny what do you want to tell other restaurant owners who... Wake up, stand up. This is America. Be free. I got patriots coming out supporting me. All right, some of his comments, remarks slightly off, but his passion, his intentions, 100% right. They're 100% right. 
people, you got to push back. You got to push back. Don't peddle conspiracies. Don't peddle this, that, and the other. Try and piece it all together. Understand the facts, but you got to push back. When you know you're right, when you know your, your freedoms, you know what the Constitution affords you, and when you know you're being taken advantage of, which so many are, we all are to an extent, some more than others, some states more than others, you got to rise up, you got to push back. Because I'm telling you, if you give this to them, if you let them take an inch, they will most certainly take miles. We are in, we are, we've never been in this position before, to the extent that we are at least right now. It is, it is a very perilous situation and people need to stand up. It's not the time to cower. Not the time to cower. All right, real quick, people who don't cower, people that you need to know about, you've heard about from me time and time again. If you've been watching Newsmax, other channels, you've seen the commercial ad nauseum. They are great people, guys. They're a mammoth nation. They are America's conservative discount club. They're on a mission to get President Trump reelected. They are still fighting. They're on a mission to get other conservatives elected, to keep radical Democrats out of office, and to keep this country on the track that our founding fathers established for us. You need to, you need to support them. It's $19 a year to join. It's better than a donation. You get discounts on tons of stuff, wireless, internet, travel, insurance, all sorts of stuff that you're already going to buy. So go check them out, mammothnation.com. You'll be glad you did. If you become a lifetime member like me, you'll get a free uh, American flag, some other goodies sent to you just for signing up. So go check it out. Again, it's mammothnation.com, guys. I wouldn't tell you if it wasn't important. All right, President Trump delivered a brief but important speech yesterday. Here it is, roll three. Thank you. This may be the most important speech I've ever made. I want to provide an update on our ongoing efforts to expose the tremendous voter fraud and irregularities which took place during the ridiculously long November 3rd elections. We used to have what was called Election Day. Now we have election days, weeks and months, and lots of bad things happened during this ridiculous period of time, especially when you have to prove almost nothing to exercise our greatest privilege, the right to vote. As President, I have no higher duty than to defend the laws and the Constitution of the United States. That is why I am determined to protect our election system, which is now under coordinated assault and siege. For months leading up to the presidential election, we were warned that we should not declare a premature victory. We were told repeatedly that it would take weeks, if not months, to determine the winner, to count the absentee ballots, and to verify the results. My opponent was told to stay away from the election. Don't campaign. We don't need you. We've got it. This election is done. In fact, they were acting like they already knew what the outcome was going to be. They had it covered, and perhaps they did, very sadly for our country. It was all very, very strange. Within days after the election, we witnessed an orchestrated effort to anoint a winner, even while many key states were still being counted. The constitutional process must be allowed to continue. We are going to defend the honesty of the vote by ensuring that every legal ballot is counted and that no illegal ballot is counted. This is not just about honoring the votes of 74 million Americans who voted for me. It's about ensuring that Americans can have faith in this election and in all so he said it. i mean he said he said there one of the big points obviously that there's fraud there's things that they're seeing that needs to be exposed and discussed we know that we get it but he said i'm fighting for 74 million plus voters who want their vote to count and deserve their vote to count and deserve to have this legal process play out in a fair transparent manner the media of course all jumped on him no surprise, we all saw that coming. And as, as we've seen on Twitter and Facebook and all the different, and YouTube here, all, all the places, oh, these claims are baseless, it's, it's baseless. Because they know that a, a large portion of the population will listen, oh, it's base. Oh, okay, it's baseless. Got it, all right, understood. No. Either they know it's not true, and I'm, I'm speaking the obvious here, we, we know this, but they know it's not true, want people to think that it's not true. 
or you can choose to believe if you if you so wish that they don't know but either way they the media don't have all the facts and it's not their job to tell people what to think i know that's where we are i know that they they're involved in this i know they're complicit in wanting to push america down a path i know that they do not like president trump i get all that but it's just so frustrating that we're at this point where the news the media big tech which was not a part of the conversation years and years ago but they are now are telling people what to think not how to think they're they're squashing opposing thought and law and and logic and and values that that we have whether it's because you're a christian or a conservative or both people in academia are doing the same thing they're not teaching people how to think they're teaching them what to think we're basically sending our kids to propaganda camps at these colleges and universities sands of, of small rare few your job's to share stories i know it's not going to happen but share stories as they're unfolding let the people decide not be partisan, manipulative hacks like you've become. Like everyone. It's ridiculous. And again, I know we're past it. I'm just airing some grievances here. But, but if, if we could get professors to teach kids how to think, not what to think. If we could get media to just share what's going on and let people ask their own questions and interpret it however they want. Instead of saying, nope, Trump's awful. You're a fascist. You're a bigot. You're a racist if you like him. When in fact, they are the fascist biggest bigots and racists, but they can say it because they got a microphone. They got a big audience. It's ridiculous. I applaud President Trump for continuing to fight. I, I, I can't stress this enough, and you know it to be true as well, but this man has not been attacked, or has been attacked rather, more than any president, than maybe any human in the history of our country. And he's not giving up. He's continuing to fight. Yes, he's got an ego. Yes, he's used to winning. Of course. No one likes to lose. And he's been successful with his career. Why should he want to lose now? No. But he's also fighting for this country and for you because he's seen it, guys. He's gotten his hands in all of this crap in D.C., in the swamp. He sees how it works. He sees how both sides play the game. And if you're a reasonable, level-headed person, you get in there and you see that, you want to push back against it and fight for it. And it's so great that he's doing that, and it's so important that we continue to fight for him. Talked about it in the, the, the Georgia video that I released earlier today. Guys, he wants you to vote there. We need to go vote there. I'm not going to get into it again here, but it's important. He's, 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 he's fighting for us. We need to fight for him. And we need to fight for our country by voting in Georgia. That Senate runoff election is so critical. Go watch the video. I know it'll piss some of you off. I don't care. I still love you. Hopefully you still love me. But we can have different opinions, but you need to understand how important that race is because it really is. And they're not the perfect people running for it. They have not stood up the way that they need to. But we need to vote. We need to vote. I can't, but, but you Georgians can. So go do it. Man, we got a lot of problems. Georgia is definitely one of them. There's a lot of things we can't control. We can't control what happens in Georgia if we don't live there. We might not be able to anyways, even there with the fraud and, and all the crap that's happening. But something we can control is what is going on south of your border. I am talking about your junk. UFM underwear has the solution. Most men's underwear these days do not provide actual support. They just don't. But they've got the answer. Their patented pouch system eliminates all skin-on-skin -skin contact in your nether regions. Moves with your body so you can go from one activity to the next without a second thought. They're great for sports, work, everyday use, even medical applications. All because their unique drawstring Adjustable support pouch allows you to increase the support to your preference, thus providing actual support. Pretty cool, huh? It's the holiday season, folks. Men, treat yourself right. Go to ufmunderwear.com. Grab yourself several pair, not just a pair, several pair. You got to get different colors, different styles. There's lots to try there. Check it out. If you use promo code DREW, you can save $6 on your order. Ladies, treat your men right, your husband, your son, your boyfriend, whatever. Again, it's ufmunderwear.com. Use promo code DREW to get $6 off. All right, real quick. And then we're going to go to break. And then we're going to get into Michigan, where there was some crazy testimony yesterday. We've seen crazy testimony everywhere, but there, there was some really impactful testimony there. We'll show you some of the clips. We'll talk about it. Hopefully it actually goes somewhere. It's getting depressing not seeing some of this go, go somewhere, but well, we'll talk about it. But over the weekend, you maybe heard about this. You maybe saw it. Vanderbilt, who's having a, a rough year, college football, never really been a strong 
program. They, you know, they've typically been a bottom dweller in the SEC. But they, with all this COVID stuff, had had their their kickers and their specialists out for the game. So Sarah Fuller, who's a goalie for the soccer team, came on as a female, practiced that that week, suited up, and and actually played in in the game over the weekend. Made history. Not for a field goal, but for kicking off, being the first female to kick off during a Power 5 game. Which is great. Agree with it, disagree with it, like it, don't like it. That's not the, the point of this. You know, I, I, look, I don't, it's not traditional, but I don't have a problem with it. That Vandy had to do what they had to do. They needed someone to kick. They ended up not having to kick a field goal um, or a PAT, but... but but you got to do what you got to do. You got you to you come up with an answer. So whatever. However you look at that, it's fine. But here's what got me, and it's gotten a lot of people. And I, I saw it earlier in the week, and I was going to say something, and then I didn't. Like, no, I'll be nice. And then I saw something again today. I was like, all right, well, I'm, we're just going to bring it up. But apparently, so she did that kick. Came at, or went in, in at halftime. You know, everyone goes in for halftime. They're at halftime, and you typically have a, a, a leader of the team, several leaders of the team. Obviously, the coaching staff make some remarks, give a, an impassioned speech, get people fired up, whether they're winning, losing, whatever. Sarah decided that she was going to give a speech. She'd been with the team for all of five minutes and wanted to just lay into the teammates, tried to encourage them, apparently. She, she, this was a, a, according to one of her recent interviews. She's had a lot of publicity this week, as you can imagine. She, she said, quote, I was like, we need to be cheering each other on. I love that she starts with, I was like... Uh, we need to be cheering each other on. This is how you win games. This is how you get better is by calling each other out for stuff. And I'm going to call you guys out. We need to be supporting one another. So slow down a second here, girl. You, let's just be, let's be real clear. I'm not unhappy for you that you got to take part in an SEC football game. Cool. Good on you. You'll never forget it. Big moment for you. But you earn the respect of your teammates, which you don't do in mere hours or days. You just don't. You don't tell them, the you know, football players who do this day in, day out. College football players, that's a job, you guys, especially on that big level. I can tell you from experience. You spend a ton of time doing that, balancing it with, 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 with your schoolwork, some better than, than others, but but it's a, it's a really, really tough task. They go through a lot. Yes, they're having a bad year. Yes, they're down in the dumps. She was trying to encourage them, but, but calling them out was not the way to do it. You don't, you don't tell them how to act, how to respond to things when you've just been there. I don't walk into some random company's like board meeting in the morning, pissing all their coffee and be like, you're doing it wrong. Deuces, I'm out. See ya. No, you earn it. You gotta, you, it, it, it doesn't matter if you're a man, a woman, what have you. When you're the new person, you don't just stand up there and call everyone out and act as if you've been there and you've been a part of it. So again, good for you. Good for you that you got to, to take part in it. Uh, apparently, she's still doing it this week. Still wants to be a part of the team. We'll see where it goes. Coach just got fired, but we'll see where all this goes. And, and again, if it was a guy, I'd say the same thing. If you just got there, maybe take a minute. Take everything in. Win or lose, whether you, you agree with how guys are doing it on the team or not, just pipe down a little bit. Pipe down a little bit. It went, went too far with it. it was, I, just, I, just, I thought the whole thing was crazy. But you can have a different opinion, opinion, different approach to it, whatever. On the other side, I think we'll definitely agree on this. We got a lot of questions that need to be answered. We got a lot of things that need to be investigated. We got a lot that has to happen in the state of Michigan. It's not just Michigan either. But we'll show you some clips there. Please give us a like on Facebook, Twitter, Parlor, guys. Super, super appreciative of you doing that. Share with your friends, your family. Give us a subs uh, subscribe here on YouTube. Click the notification button. We're still trying to battle through it. They're not very happy with us. I don't know why. I think we're pretty fair, but we have different values, different opinions. So we're getting shadow banned consistently. Making a huge Huge, devastating dent in our in our business operations. But hopefully we can get through that. You can check us out on Rumble, and please do. Go to Rumble. They're not going to suppress us. They're good guys. We know the leadership. We know a lot of people there. A lot of conservative voices are going there. So it's rumble.com. You can download the app as well. Just find the show. Search Drew Berquist. Search this is my show with Drew Berquist. Click subscribe. 
They'll notify you via email. Easy peasy. You'll be glad you did. We'll be glad you did. Super appreciative of all your support. Get to uh, the Michigan hearings. A couple other things on the other side. Stick around. America's under attack, and they're all around us. I'm talking about liberal Democrats, and they're out to destroy everything that we've worked so hard for. Mammoth Nation's here to fight for you. You only get one vote, so let's join forces. We support conservative lawmakers in the causes you hold so dearly. We stand behind our police, veterans, the Second Amendment, and much more. We need your help, so join today. only proper way to adjust your set. Yeah. Underwear for men. Set them once and done for all day comfort. Do you love freedom? Do you love being clean? Then you'll love Hero Soap Company. Made in the USA. Chemical and fragrance free. A portion of each purchase donated to veteran and first responder charities. Initial subscription purchase is matched bar for bar and sent overseas to deploy troops. Let freedom clean. Hero Soap Company. All right, guys, welcome back. This segment brought to you by Hero Soap Company. They are amazing people. It's an amazing company. They do a ton to get homeless veterans off the street working with Operation Finally Home. And it's guys, it's super important. I say it all the time, but I really mean it. And I hope that you believe it and feel the same way, too. It's, it's, it's critical that we help our veteran-owned companies, companies owned by first responders, retired or active law enforcement officers, firefighters, et cetera. We've got to take care of the people who take care of us. So go check them out. Made here in the USA, all natural, essential oils, none of the harmful crap you find in competitor soap companies out there. Hero Soap Company, go subscribe for a no contract monthly delivery of soap straight to your front door, never run out again. You can use promo code Drew, save 10%. Also, while you are there, check out the Freedom Box. It's a new product they've got. Been telling you about it, it's awesome. You should get one for yourself. Get one for your loved ones, colleagues, whoever, anyone that smells, uh, go check it out. You can also use promo code Drew on that, save 10%. They've got body washes, tons of stuff there for men and women. Again, HeroSoapCompany.com, let freedom clean. You'll be glad you did, guys, good people. All right, let's get to Michigan. By the way, Nevada, Big hearing happening today in Nevada. I think 15, give or take, I might be off by a couple, but I think it's 15 witnesses testifying. We'll see what happens with that. I'm sure we'll talk about it tomorrow, if not later today. So keep an eye out for that. But Michigan, there was a lot going on in Michigan this week and particularly yesterday. So we've got several clips we're going to show you. We'll break them down. Uh, again, there's probably some that were missing and, and maybe one that you saw and you wish that we'd watched. There's a lot of them, guys. So go check them out. You can find them. On the internet, on the internet, on Twitter, on, on on plenty of different publications and sites. So go check that out. But here's the first one. We'll start here, and then we'll discuss rule four. So my name is Christy Klamer. I'm a registered voter from Oakland County. I was a poll challenger at TCF on November 3rd from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. and November 4th from 8:30 a.m. to 4:30 a.m. and November 5th. I was there for a total of 35 hours. In those 35 hours, I experienced the chain of custody being broken in many different ways. I'm gonna focus on three of them. Around 7.30 a.m. on November 3rd, over the microphone, everyone was asked how many Republican poll workers there were by a show of hands. When announced there were two, I looked around and couldn't see any hands going up from where I was sitting. Not having at least one re uh, Republican poll worker at the 134 tables made it impossible for ballots to be duplicated legally. Also, there were no Republican poll workers to see the ballots being secured at the end of the process as well. Almost all the poll workers were told that they could go home at 11.30, this is on November 4th, p.m., even though none of the ballots were secured until hours after that. Tables with ballots were left unattended and not secure. And even at the end of the night, when they were pretty much wrapping up, um, I went, just started going through every single one of them, and there was eight that were locked, but they were not locked. We made sure they were locked. I think it was unintentional, um, but concerning. 
Also, I witnessed 46 ballots get put in manually, meaning they were not in the electronic system and they were not in the paper poll books. I recorded each name and ballot number along with how they had the birth date of 1-1-1900. I witnessed majority of these ballots being entered between 9 p.m. and 11 p.m. on November 4th. I was unable to challenge a ballot due to the consistent intimidation, harassment, and verbal attacks throughout the day. This came from Democrat challengers, independents, a lawyer, team leaders, supervisors. I was threatened to be escorted out by a Democrat lawyer. I have a very different perspective on how secure our elections are experiencing all that I did. It's very disturbing and disheartening. As you've heard today, there is much credible evidence that the chain of custody was broken time and time again, which created an election with no integrity. Michigan citizens are needing to trust our election system in our state. We are asking you, asking for a fair, only asking for a fair and honest election to be certified. Thank you for listening. All right, so lots of concerns, right? And she seems like a level-headed person. She seems fair, seems reasonable, but there's lots of things she's saying there that at minimum should raise an alarm. Of course, the Democrats, the media say, oh, no, 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 don't listen to her. Everything was fine. It was all good. But as she says, I mean, she says it there, and we, I, I say it every damn day. You're, I'm sure sick of me saying it. But we're just asking. We're just asking as Americans, fellow human beings who just want fairness to have this all checked out so we can ensure fair elections. Not just now, not just now. President Trump said it in his, his clip earlier. It's not just about this election. It is very much about this election, but it's about all elections. It's about future elections, because if we can't get this one right, no one will ever trust it again moving forward. If we can't listen to people like, like this, this woman and look into what she's alleging under oath, then what, then what are we doing? What are we doing? Then there was this one, rule five. I was a poll challenger at the TCF Center on Monday, November 2nd, 3rd, and 4th. On November 4th, early in the morning, I was standing at the adjudication table, and a ballot came across the screen. The ballot had a straight party ticket vote for both the Democrat and the Republican. It was a filled-in circle, which is an intentional mark. It's not a dash. It's not a dot. When the ballot came across the screen, there was no other marks. None of the judges and none of the other ballot proposals had been voted on. The poll worker then said, I think I'm going to give it to the Democrats. That's absolutely absurd. That is illegal. The vote should have been tossed out. At that moment, I said, absolutely not. I'm going to challenge this. So I go get her supervisor. And then her supervisor defers to her and says, well, what do you think? And I'm like, well, what do you think? It doesn't matter what you think. It's the law. Our feelings, our emotions, our thoughts are totally irrelevant. You follow the law. And that ballot is to be tossed out. But she wanted to give it to the Democrats. So then I go get the gentleman who was overseeing the entire absentee ballot counting process while Daniel Baxter was gone. So this gentleman's name, I do not know. I go get him. He's overseeing the entire process while Daniel Baxter is gone. I ask him. He says to the girl, what do you think? It was disgusting. I was enraged. And I simply asked a question. I said, well, why not give it to the Republican instead of the Democrats? The gentleman began screaming at me, began yelling at me, began telling me that I had no right to talk to her, and he told her to push the ballot through. And prior to that, that same poll worker, a ballot came across the adjudication screen where this voter had voted for Joe Biden and the Green Party presidential candidate, and she gave the vote to Joe Biden. I also saw the ballots show up in the middle of the night. Also, I inquired about the tabulation numbers from the tabulation machine between shift changes. I was denied that information. We saw a lot of irregular things. This is not an anomaly. Just because all of us have different accounts of what we saw, that doesn't make them invalid. And to expect Secretary Benson to actually do something about it is foolhardy. To accept, uh, to accept Dan and Essel to do anything about it would be foolhardy. So we're appealing to you guys to do something about it. Because if our elections aren't fair, then we have no republic left. It's a banana republic. We have nothing. And, and we don't trust the election process. Why do you think a lot of people don't vote? Because they feel it's the big... I, th I think I'm just going to give it to the Democrats. You've got to be kidding me. Then the first supervisor, she said, pushes it back to the person. Then she goes up a level in the hierarchy of people that were there that night. And he pushes it back onto the person. And then eventually they say, just push it through. I think I'm going to yeah, I think I'm going to give it to Democrat. I'm feeling Biden right now. I'm giving it to Biden. Of course, most of those people working the polls, which again, if we leave this up to all of the people working all of these cities to whatever they want to do that night without consequence, 
you know that those people are not going to traditionally be conservative voters. They're not going to be conservative-minded people. You can't expect a poll worker in Philadelphia, Detroit, Atlanta, you know, Milwaukee, fill in the blank, to be a big Trump supporter. And they shouldn't be. They shouldn't be necessarily for him. They shouldn't be for Biden either. But, but the reality is, in these cities, these people who work those, those stations are fed the same Democrat BS, the same mainstream media BS throughout their lives, throughout their communities. That's what, that's, that's what those communities are, these Democrat-run cities. So uh, us expecting things to go smoothly and be fair and transparent there should be reasonable, but it's also, it's also got to be understood that a lot of these people, I mean, you see people, you see pictures of people wearing masks with Biden on. You see pictures of people wearing Black Lives Matters t-shirts and all this other stuff. It's like, you cannot be working this job. There's no way you're, you're doing it in an, an unbiased way. And it should just be as simple as scan this, do this, and then whatever happens, happens. But it's not. And we know it's not. There's always been some form of, of, of fraud and, and issues with elections. This year is just blown up. It's the Hiroshima of frickin' election disasters. And it's just, it's disappointing to see. It's disappointing to see them do that. Like, like she said, it should be thrown out. It should be thrown out. Clear as day. And she should be allowed to not be, to do her job and not be accosted for having a different opinion or, or calling someone out on something. No one likes to be called out. I get it. But, but the way this has all been handled, and there's so many stories like this, if it was just this one female, this one lady saying this, you could say, oh, well, she just is, is, a, is a Trump person. She's, she's being biased on her own side. Okay, you could if it was one person. I don't know her. But I, I'm concerned about her story that she said under oath. And I'm moreover concerned that there are hundreds upon hundreds upon hundreds of these examples in all of these six key states that we're talking about right now. Then there was this guy. We'll finish up on this guy. And then again, you can go find more across the internet. There's more stuff that's going to be coming out all week. The Nevada stuff today, lots to continue to, to, to discuss and, and look out for, but we only have so much time. So we'll look at this one and then we'll discuss and we'll move on. Roll six. I believe that I witnessed evidence of mass election fraud on the morning of November 4th and the evening of November 4th. I'm only going to talk about the morning right now. While I served as a trained and credentialed election challenger at the Detroit Absent Voter County Boards, TCF Center Detroit. I arrived at the county boards at approximately 06.30 a.m. after being briefed in room 260. We've been advised of a very large ballot drop, approximately in the vicinity of 4 a.m. Uh, night shift observers had indicated that about 61 boxes had been delivered. I began observing the process of ballots at several county boards. I quickly noticed that none, I mean none, of the names were being scanned from the ballots were in the electronic poll books. All of the names that were found were found in the supplemental sheets. We know that the poll books, the electronic poll books, were updated on Sunday, November 1st. That meant that all of these new ballots had to have been brand new registered voters on Monday, November 2nd, or Tuesday, November 3rd. I found it very hard to believe that tens of thousands of people had registered in just two short days. So I began writing down the names on the ballots immediately after they were scanned by the computer poll worker. As soon as I began, I was severely obstructed by five different persons that I could no longer, such that I could no longer continue my legal responsibility as a poll challenger. These five persons comprised of a poll worker, a supervisor, an uncredentialed person, a Democrat challenger, and one of the top leaders of the ABCB. The details can be found on my affidavit. Does anyone believe that 30 or 40,000 new voters were actually signed up legally in two days? I implore every member of this board to protect the Constitution. I implore you to give us a full forensic audit. So, uh, look, kind of more of the same. 
all of the, the stories slightly different, different instances and occurrences, obviously, they're going to be different, but you're finding 30 to 40,000 new voters on supplemental sheets when they had just, as he said, they had just updated the polls on the first. So that should raise some concerns. It certainly warrants investigating a little bit and figuring out how that, how that happened. Is it possible? Anything's possible. Is it likely? No. So it warrants that. But then when you're trying to annotate everything and, and document it and say, okay, well, this doesn't really seem right, so I'm going to try and do the right thing there, you're told that you can't continue your duties. You're accosted for, for standing up for what's fair and right. And it doesn't matter. If it had been reversed, the, the other side would be saying the same damn thing. No, 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 this doesn't look right. We need to, we need to do something about this. But that's what we've seen. That's what we've seen in all of these instances. Someone says something about it, and then they're, oh, I don't like that you're calling us out for doing something that's nefarious, possibly illegal. You need to go. Super depressing. Super depressing. Do these three individuals and their stories prove that there was fraud? Not necessarily. Pretty damn likely. Does it prove or demonstrate that there's going to be enough to overturn things? Not necessarily. But when there's so many of these stories out there, there's so many concerns out there, there's so many issues with Dominion, so there's issues across the board on everything. No one should, should just take these, these poll workers, no one should take election officials, no one should take the mainstream media, no one should take any of these people's words for truth. You should, you should push on and be, I, I mean, honestly, like this is an, like life is about patterns and numbers to an extent, and you can see the pattern here that there's so much wrong that a minimum, whether it's overturned, not overturned, we cannot trust elections unless something crazy comes out here. And it also proves this. It proves that Democrats are at minimum, as we know, more than ever, angry bullies. They're, they do not tolerate people having different opinions, ideas. They do not tolerate them being them, other people calling them out for this behavior, for this ideology, for this whatever. The mask has been, I mean, the veil is up. We, 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 we learned a lot about these people over the last four years. Some people knew it before. Some people thought it, but weren't totally sure. But if you cannot see that, if you cannot see that there's significant concerns with this election and you shouldn't be able to trust it, no matter who actually won, I think we did, but, but no matter who won, you should, everyone should look at it and say, oh, I don't know, this doesn't, doesn't seem good. And then you should be on the page that says, these people are awful. They project all the stuff that they are onto us. They say we're hateful. They say we're racist. They say we're fascist. They say we're authoritarian. They say we're this, that, and the other. When we're none of those things, we're actually, if anything, too kind. And because we've been too kind, they've taken advantage of it and convinced a ton of people in this country that we're something that we're not when they, in fact, are the ones pushing all of this hate. I can't wait to, to, to see at least some, even if it's just a handful of Democrats wake up and see in the not too distant future that, oh, yeah, no, we're the fascists. We're the racists. We're the mean, intolerant people who oppress other opinions and other people. Talk about making lists. They're awful. They do not love this country. They do not like you. They like themselves. They like power. End of story. It's ridiculous. It's where we are. Merry Christmas. <laughs> oh. All right, like I said, go check out the Georgia video earlier. It's important, guys. If you're there, please. I, I'm, I, I'm not a beggar. I'm begging you to vote. Please do. It's, it's important. It, the fate of our country is on the line. I don't, I don't like how anyone has acted in that state either, seeing, seeing some really good people who have stood up and fought back. But I can tell you this, if we don't get them through and then work to fix things after the fact, we'll never have the chance to do it again. Because if they take everything, the whole kit and caboodle, Congress, Senate, White House, we're going to be getting through Christmas, maybe New Year's, and then post-January, Shit's going to get really, 
really crazy and it's not going to be good for me it's not going to be good for you and it's certainly not going to be good for this country so be frustrated be pissed at how people are handling things but listen to trump don't listen to me listen to trump listen to other people that are that are laying things out if you don't want to listen to me but please vote please vote stay strong keep fighting for trump keep fighting for for transparency and clarity on what's happened with this this awful election and keep fighting for this country it's super important super important be prepared be smart too as we head into the holidays enjoy the holidays as i keep saying this week but also be just don't go crazy don't be ridiculous and be a conspiracy theorist but but be prepared be prepared for for what's going to come because i can tell you i tweeted about this yesterday too january is not going to be good regardless of who wins january is not going to be good i don't think february is going to be a whole lot better and i don't say that to be a debbie downer try to be as optimistic as i can but i i can just tell you we all thought 2020 sucked and we're looking forward to the future we've got people like fauci and all these other people saying things aren't going to open until at least the fall well push back against that for one but i think 2020 is going to look like a cakewalk compared to how january and february look or are going to look around so be smart be prepared have a great day probably have some more stuff coming your way today tonight certainly one more show tomorrow we hope you have a good one we look forward to seeing you soon take care